So we are expecting 12 students today, and we've got one, two, three, six. Come on, fill, fill the sides. And there's a seat waiting here for someone. It's special. I'm assuming that somebody will be here. And I think we're almost ready to go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so why don't we start? If you'll just pass that up. Well, my name is Ellen Malamud, and my work is with something called narrative medicine. It's, it's storytelling about people's disease and people's lives, so that we don't separate the two. We've expanded it beyond the narrative in terms of storytelling. We include all the arts. The daily practice of medicine is connecting to other people. If we have that capacity, even as a person who admires art, then can we develop those skills of empathy? A week in a bed as a patient, what happens? Everything from janitors coming in and turning lights on when you're trying to sleep, getting food that is absolutely inedible, having visitors that you can't send away because otherwise you're the creepy bad patient in room 230. So being a patient is really important for a doctor to understand. Empathy is the feeling that one might have for a patient. And compassion is the action that one uses in order to work with that patient. So one is more the feeling and one is more the action, which is where we get the statement, compassionate care. So I guess my next question to you is, if you grow up in a house where there's no expression of it, can you learn how you can translate feelings of empathy into compassionate care? We look at um, medicine kind of like theater. There is no script. You're improvising with each patient at each session. I'm glad that you came in and uh, you're, you're here to buy me that. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to It say? means being present. It means understanding that empathy can mean many things. Holding the space for someone, learning to listen. Um, no, I think that might be it. Okay, so it's That's when I noticed. Okay, and it hasn't changed. Being a patient really is the best way to understand the problems within our healthcare system. I was very healthy. I was a vegetarian. I was teaching exercise class. I was a certified Alexander Technique teacher. So I was teaching people how to deal with pain. And then when I was 52 years old, a lump was in my breast through a mammogram. And I was pretty shocked. I, at first I like made a joke of it because it was not easy to accept. I stopped making a joke after the first day. It wasn't funny. I was aware that medical ease, even though I'm very smart, did not make sense when I was panicked. I felt like doctors would come into my room and walk out without making any kind of connection. My nurses during chemotherapy and radiation and surgery were amazing because people go into nursing if they have a sense of empathy or compassion. But doctors need to be trained in that too. Being ill is hard enough. If there are ways that we can make being ill easier for people, it makes a real difference. It's not expressed in every culture. It's not expressed in every family unit. Can you learn it by absorbing art? And you might think, well, you know, I'm not an art person. I'm a science person, as though the brain is split in two so clearly that we can't absorb both of those concepts. Even if you are a listener, a watcher, what are your art forms? What do you like? I like to read. Ah, now to me, reading, I mean, talk about absorbing other cultures, empathy, understanding by looking at what we call close reading in our work here. How do you read between the lines, which is what you're going to be doing with patients all the time. What do you like? Uh, country western dancing. Oh, great. Did you know that about him? You do now. <laughs> so when you first presented this question, I thought of the food program I run. Mm. Uh, we take produce that's been rejected, and we save approximately 30 million pounds of fresh produce. And I just we take the This is going beyond traditional training. And a lot of seasoned doctors and faculty members say, why reinvent the wheel? We've been doing it like this for years. 
And my argument there is we've been doing it, but a lot of people have gotten hurt through this process, have had illnesses perhaps that were overlooked or that were caused by inadequate communication. So I think this is absolutely necessary, especially as technology becomes so much more a part of healthcare that we cannot lose the humanity, the humanism in medicine. Okay, what if it's like a person stroking down into water and it's just somebody swimming and you can't even see their body over here? Oh. Yeah, don't be left in your <laughs> 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 like that. Considering all images we see. This is like a, like a clock or something. This is the hour hand. It's almost back up to 12. It's a cycle of the day. I honestly think it's just... Whatever medium. Something we look at at the beginning of session one, where we're focusing on visual arts. We look at the traits, characteristics that are similar, the, the skills that a physician needs to know. And an actor needs to know, but also a dancer or a musician. Can you hear more than one sound at a time when you're listening with a stethoscope? We were wondering if either it was age causing the wrinkles or if they had been in the water for a long time, so they were swimming. Those skills that you know as appreciators of art are similar to the skills that you will have to learn as medical practitioners. So I can throw out one example. Um, a person who sculpts. The shared skill with you learning to be a physician is that you both need to know anatomy. It's made out of glass and ceramic. It was made by a patient whose name is John Woos. It's called Imperfect Bone Origin. But then when you really start looking at the physician, we notice he's kind of like relaxing. He or she, the skeleton. Is Could like, you tell the gender? I'm sure I'm supposed to, but no. <laughs> <laughs> You've got three more years to okay. know this. Don't worry about it. But it was kind of like reclining. Okay, so this is his quote. It is marked with gold and there's deformity in every location of every fracture I have ever had and contains the actual plate that was in my femur when I was a child. This piece is a tribute to human ability, specifically the human ability to create and overcome. You know, the hand looks sort of like the knuckles were a little thicker, um, and that made me... So what we're trying to teach is how to look quickly and see a lot. Grasping for an object for or something. for something greater, or, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. now we got the well, I want students who have been told for a very long time that they are perfect to get rid of that and to have a little humility and look at themselves. A physician unveiling that art form and at least for us we're thinking about how much training we're getting, all that we have to go through. To this is the time to know yourself. This is a time for reflection because in medical school you won't have that leisure. It's a hard job. And that's in addition, of course, to the science that they need to learn. There have been studies over years looking at how doctors respond to their experience with medical humanities courses. And most doctors will say their work is bigger than just medicine for them. It's fulfilling in a different way. They're happier. It reminds me of home, right? Like Part of learning how to be a physician that goes home at the end of a work week and still has something left is what your boundaries are. There needs to be a knowledge before you begin this work of what you can give. And I think knowing what you can give and still stay whole is really important. So thank you and I'll see you again at the end of the semester for a different kind of workshop. Take advantage of being here. You know, not just sitting in those very dark classrooms that you have.